can you get what this man named Jesus had? Nowhere else does salvation come from. Not in this old world, praise God. There's nowhere else, nobody else. Muhammad don't have it. Buddha don't have it, praise God. The people, there's all kinds of religions in this world, and they worship all kinds of gods. But I want you to know something this morning. There's no more of truth and real God this morning. His name is Jesus, praise be to God. He's the one that died for me and you this morning. He's the one, praise God, that set the way clear this morning. He's the one this morning that, praise God, changed you if you've been changed in here. He's the one that's still giving salvation over 2,000 years later. Amen. He's the one this morning that I came to praise. He's good this morning, people. He's good. I love my God this morning. Now, if you don't know you need Jesus, if you didn't know you needed him when you came in here, I just told you, you need Jesus. And you need him more than anything else. Now, if you will, let's try to get into this. And it says in, in verse number one, And ye, and you, he hath be quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. I want you to know something this morning. If you, praise God, are in here, if you know Christ down, praise God, it's because that he loves you and he opened your eyes to show you that you were in your sins and you needed something different. And if you don't know him this morning as of yet, I want you to know, praise God, that he wants to open your eyes to this to this knowledge that you need him. Because whether you know it or not, you may be walking and you may be talking and breath may be coming in and out of your mouth, praise God. But I want you to know something. Honey, if you're within your sins, you are dead, praise God, this morning. The Bible says, Jesus said, he called them back to us, praise God. They're pretty on the outside, praise God. They look just like they're supposed to on the outside. But he said the inside of them was full of dead man's bones. I want you to know something this morning. Honey, the sin, the Bible talks about sin. He says it's pleasurable for a season. But after that, praise God, comes death. There's a price for sin. There's a price this morning that you're going to have to pay for sin. And there's a price that if you're in here and you're not saved, you've already paid for sin. If, if you've been here, praise God, and you are saved this morning, there was, before you got saved, there was all kinds of prices that you paid for sin that's in your life. People say, I don't understand. Sin will devoid you. It will cause you to lose your house. It'll cause you to lose your family. It'll cause you to lose your happiness. It'll cause you to lose your job. It'll cause you to lose all hope. That's what sin does. Sin separates you from Christ. It gives a void between you and him, praise God. It puts a passage, praise God, a, a, a void between you that you can't communicate or you think you can't communicate with Christ. Sin is absolutely is the worst thing that I can imagine. Satan knows what he's doing this morning. He knows how to, to give you just a little bit of sin. I said the other night, it's kind of like a drug dealer. They'll give you a little bit at first, praise God, and let you see what it's like. <laughs> and the Bible says that for a season, there's joy in sin. <clears throat> so he'll give you just a little bit, and he'll let you start down that path. And the next thing you know, he's speaking a lot of it. And the next thing you know, you're nothing but sin. This morning, I'm thanking God that he showed me I needed him. And it says, ye and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. I want you to know something. About 15 years ago, this boy that stands before you this morning, I guess I said that uh, wrong. Boy, I'm not a boy no more. I'm almost an old man now. But anyway, this guy that stands here before you this morning was lost. And I was undone. And I was going to a devil's hell. I, praise God, had no idea how bad it was. I was raised in church since I was a little boy, and I knew of Christ since I was this high, praise God. I knew of him, but I never knew him, and I didn't get to know him until about 15 years ago. And honey, when he moved in, praise God, things started changing. The sins that I had acquired to that point, he forgave them, and he washed them away. He cleansed me from the inside to the out. He filled me from the inside to the out. I'm 
I'm not the same man that I was at that time. I'm not the same person that I used to be. I was dead walking around. I used to kid and say, praise God, I didn't know it, but I got married while I was dead. I went to school while I was dead. I done a lot of things while I was dead. But since I've been saved, since I've been saved, God has started me a new life. He started me all over, praise God. The Bible says, honey, that we're like babes in Christ. That we started from the beginning again. He's washed you clean in here this morning if you've been saved. All those sins you had before is gone. It says, and he quickened you. I like that word quicken. I looked it up. It says, to spring to life, to become animated, to stimulate, to excite, to arouse, to inspire, to kindle. The Bible says here that he quickened, that he quickened you, that we're dead in your trespasses. You may have been dead at one time, but if you know Christ is your Savior, you're no longer dead. You're no longer dead. He's brought you from death to life. Verse number two, it says, Were in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of our, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You tell me you don't remember the time that you walked, praise God, in, uh, according to the course of this old world. You tell me this old world ain't still playing that same old drum beat trying to get people to walk to it. They're still spewing the same stuff from Washington, D.C., changing laws to take God out of this, to take God out of that. They're still, the world's still beating that same drum that we've all walked to at one time or another. That same beat, that praise God, that we've all marched to. There's none of you in here that's not marched to it at one time or another. Some of us in here can say, I was forgiven of this, 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 and this. And boy, it seems like a lot compared to maybe some of us, the rest of us. But I want you to know, sin's not greater. There's no big sins, little sins, no in-between sins. Sin is sin. And no sin's going to enter into heaven. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ to cover the sin. It takes him to quicken you from a sinful state, from a dead state, back to a life state. I'm glad this morning, praise God, that he quickened these old bones. That he, praise God, brought this sinner back to life. That he gave me something this morning that burns deep down in the inside of me. That keeps me going when the world says don't go no more. That keeps me coming, praise God, when the, the devil says send it home. Praise God that keeps me going. I'm glad that he gave me that all of those years ago. This morning, I'm glad that he quickened me. I feel it within my soul. I feel it this morning. I know, praise God, who saved me. I know who set me free. And I know what he loosed me from. When I walked to the altar, I couldn't hardly stand up. I had so much on me. When I raised up for the altar, it felt like he raised and left the world up off my shoulders. And he had, because he had forgiven me for all the works that I had in him. He had forgiven me for all the times that I never marched to that same drum that everybody marches to. He had forgiven me for the sins that I acquired to that point, the trespasses that I had done. Verse number three, it says, among whom also we all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Whether you realize it or not, if you're not saved in here this morning, you are part of this children of wrath that I was talking about. You are part of the people that are lost and undone, that needs Jesus, just like I started out telling you. See, there's none of us in here, and I tell you this every Sunday. Please never get tired of hearing this because this is religion. This is, praise God, Christianity. There's none of you going to get home without Jesus Christ. No, not one. Not one. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus come looking for me. See, when I went to that church all those years ago, I didn't go looking for Jesus that morning. I went because I told someone I'd be there. But I thank me to Jesus that Jesus was there looking for me. I thank God this morning that he come looking for me. 
Verse number four, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Mercy. Think about mercy. You hear it said all the time, God, God has mercy. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. Sometimes we don't realize what mercy is. Mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone who it is within one's power to punish or to harm. So in other words, you're a criminal and you were set before a judge and you was accused of this crime, a horrible crime. And the thing about it is, you know you've done that horrible crime. And the judge had every right to give you death. But when you got before him, he knew that you was guilty, but he gave you mercy instead of death. And he let you go and he restarted you. See, that's what Jesus Christ done. That's what God done for you. If you've been saved in here, he showed you mercy. You was praise God, heading for death. You had no choice. You was going to hell. And he showed you mercy. He had every right to let you continue to walk the way you was walking. He had every right to discipline you. But he didn't do that. He showed you mercy. So when people say that we serve a merciful God, that's what you're talking about. When I tell you that I'm glad that God's merciful toward me, that's what I'm talking about this morning. I'm glad that he looks down upon me and I know the blood and shake his head sometimes. And he probably gets really frustrated with me as his child. But I'm glad that he looks down with love in his eyes and mercy in his heart. I'm glad this morning that my God showed me mercy. I'm glad that he showed me mercy because I was that guilty man. I was the guilty man I spoke of. I knew I was guilty. I knew I had done that. I knew I deserved what I was getting. But God gave me mercy. See, that's what makes God so great. There's no one else that can do that. There's no one else that can wipe away a whole lifetime full of that and give you a brand new start. There's no one else. Some of you in here started serving Christ when you was a child. Maybe you didn't ever get out into the things of the world that, that some of us got out into. But there's others in here that didn't start serving Christ as a child. And we got into all kinds of stuff that we should have never been in. But you know what? God forgave us of that just as well as he forgave you of yours. Tossed the bottom of the ocean. Just as far as the east is from the west, God forgave you. I'm thankful this morning that my God is merciful. I'm thankful that he showed me mercy. In verse number five, it says, Even when we were dead in our sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Now there's another word, grace. Grace, free and unmerited favor of God. You didn't earn grace. God gave you grace. He gave you mercy to forgive your sin. He gave you grace because he wanted to give it to you. You didn't earn it. It was nothing that you earned, nothing you could have earned. He gave it to you freely. And it says, even when we were dead in sin, he quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. By grace, by God's grace, by what he gave free to you that was unmerited in favor, by what he gave to you that you didn't deserve. Grace. Verse number six. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I can tell you during the time that I've been saved, how many times has he showed his mercy and his grace again and again and again, has he picked me up? Has he washed me clean? Has he dusted me off? Has he set me back on the path again? How many times this morning has he done that for me? Now you can answer your own question on that. I don't know how many times he's done that for you. But I can assure you that I, I, I'd be willing to say that there's no one in here that's ever been saved that God ain't had to pick up. And he ain't had to dust off. 
and he ain't had to set you back up on the right way again. I bet there's no one in here that can say that and be honest. We all like to sit in our padded pews and thank, praise God, that we're above all that. But I got news for you this morning. You ain't above it this morning. You, praise God, can't live a good enough life. You can't, you never could, you never will be able to live a good enough life. That only by Jesus Christ and by mercy and by grace will you ever see him. Only by those things. Only by those things. Other people will tell you there's other ways to go to heaven. And when they tell you that, I can tell you right now, if it's on TV, change the channel. Amen. If it's somewhere that you can walk away from that conversation, walk away from that conversation. Because those people are lying. They're misleading you. They're telling you things that's not true. You cannot get to heaven any other way. There's but one way. But one way. He's the one that has the mercy. He's the one that has the grace. He's the one that paid for salvation. He paid for my sins. Muhammad didn't have a thing to do with it. Buddha didn't have nothing to do with my sins. That was mean. They had the same problem I had. Verse number seven. That in the ages to come, he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, listen to that, for by grace you are saved through faith. It's by grace, praise God. It's by that free and unmerited favor of God that you're saved. It's through by grace that you are saved through the faith that you have. The Bible says that every man is dealt a measure of faith. It's your faith that Jesus Christ died on the cross on Calvary. It's your faith, because there's none of us in here old enough that we've seen that happen. It's my faith, praise God, that we look out across the waters and know that there's a place that we're going to go one day when we die. It's my faith, praise God, that I put my trust in Christ. It's my faith, praise God, that he raises me up every day. It's my faith that he keeps me where I need to be, praise God. It's my faith that I'll go to heaven one day. It's my faith, praise God, that my God loves me and my God cares for me. It's my faith. God gave that unmerited favor to the grace. Jesus, praise God, provided what would pay for my salvation. And I have to have faith that he done it. I have to have faith that he paid for it, that he bought it, that it was his to give, and he gave it to me. I have to have faith that he's going to lead me home, that he's going to take me, praise God, when he goes. I got to have faith, and I got to walk by faith. See, because sometimes we forget that part. we got to walk by faith. See, there's sometimes in our life, we'll get to the edge of a cliff, and there's no, there's no other way, praise God, to go. But we know we got to keep going. And we know there's no other way to go. There's no bridges in sight. There's nothing. And that first step really looks like a big one. But it's by faith. It's by grace. It's by praise God. But Jesus Christ told us to walk by faith. It's by faith that we got to take that step out. Into that unknown. Jesus Christ is going to take care of his children. I have faith in my Lord. I have faith in what he done for me on Calvary. I have faith that his blood is sufficient. I have faith this morning that my God is going to keep me. The Bible says that we're in the palm of his hands and no one can pluck it out of the palm of his hands. Now, I'm not a preacher that's got to preach to you. That praise God that you can't pluck your own self out of that hand. You'll never hear me say that. I, I don't really go that way. What I can tell you is, you have to choose to step into that big love of Him. He gave you the choice. He opened your eyes. He called you. You had to choose to get a step into that big hand of Him. And as sure as I'm standing here this morning, if you choose to step in, you can choose to step out this morning. Absolutely. The Bible talks of it. The Bible talks of Acts like who don't like to hear that. It's easier to believe, praise God, that once you're saved, you're always saved. I don't see that in my Bible. No work. But I can tell you where it take you where it shows that you fire up to the backslide. By definition, to be a backslide, you've had to be somewhere and slide backwards. Is that not right? So I'm a firm believer. If you step into that man, he'll let you step out if you want. 
But the fact of the matter is, if you stay in that big hand, I have faith in him that he's going to keep me. I have faith that I will stay, that there ain't nobody going to pull me out. I have faith, praise God, if he put me here as a pastor, that he'll keep me here. I have faith, praise God, if he put me here for a reason, that that reason's going to take place, that that man that the event's going to happen. If he wanted to grow his church in one way or the other, and he wants to do it through the maze, every one of you, I have faith that it's going to happen this morning. We have lost our faith in this country. We have forgotten what grace was. We have forgotten what mercy was. And we no longer look at it that way. When one of our brothers and sisters fall, we don't look at them with grace or mercy. We don't look at them with love or kindness. We look at them as just another one that fell on the wayside. I got news for you. If God looked at you like that, there ain't nothing else to be sitting here this morning. If God looked at the ones that fell on the wayside and he didn't desire them to come back, there ain't none of you to be sitting here. We be all home watching TV. The Bible says, "For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. If you're saved in here this morning, it is by the gift of God that you're saved. The gift that He gave. He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to pay for mine and your sins, to die on Calvary." It's his gift that he gives you. You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. God gave it to you as a gift. Now, do you still got to walk the life? Absolutely. You still got to walk the walk. You still got things that you got to do as a Christian. You can't get saved today and go back to living just like what you was living yesterday and think that things is going to be okay because it ain't. If there's not a change in you, honey, then you need to get Christ. You're still doing the things you used to do before you got saved. You need to go back to an altar. You need to go back and find Christ because you didn't get him the first time. Verse number nine. It says that all this is given as a gift to God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If we could work our way into heaven, don't let nobody get you. We'd be the ones, the ones that's going to heaven will be boasting everywhere. I'm going to make it to heaven because I done this, because I done that, because I'm going to do this. I started a church with this many members. I done this, I done that. How many times y'all heard that? I've heard that many times. People say it. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with Jesus has to do with him this morning. It's his gift this morning. This eye ain't worth nothing. This eye is only a servant of him. This eye was made by him. This eye don't have nothing to do with it other than I got to walk the walk. And he called me a walk. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works, but you know, there is a part in the Bible where it says, Praise God, you show you show a man that's saved without works, I'll show you my I'll show you my salvation with works, my works. So if you're going to be saved, there's going to be works. There's going to be fruit that you're going to bear. I said in here Wednesday night, peaches, peach trees don't grow apples. Cherry trees don't grow peaches. If you are Christ, then you will be of Christ. The things that come for you, from you, will be of Christ. If they're not, then you need to go back and visit the altar. You didn't get what you think you got. But it ain't because it ain't because we can work hard enough. It ain't because we can be rich enough. If it would be, heaven would be no different than earth. Heaven would be just as tainted as the earth that we live in. The people with the money would have all the say. The people with the pool would have all the say. They would be the ones setting in power. While the rest of us would be lucky if they let us in. So it has nothing to do with that. See, that's what makes this great. This is for everybody. Being saved is not for one class of people. It's not for the upper class. It's not for the lower class and the middle class. It's for every class. He died for us all, not just one. He didn't just die for the ones of us that had been raised in church. He didn't just die for the ones of us that comes in and fills the pews on Sunday. He didn't just die, praise God, 
for the churches that you bring that they have thousands of members. He didn't just die for the little country church that has 15 members in the back of it. He didn't just die for you. He died for the whole world. Every man, boy, and girl in this world that's ever been or ever will be, Jesus Christ died for them. Amen. And the same salvation, praise God, that he gave to me and you is available to them. It don't take money. It don't take looks. It don't take nice hair. It don't take nothing, praise God. It takes you and your walk with him and your ability to say, Jesus, please forgive me of what I've done and lead and guide my life. Even as Christians in here, let me tell you all something. I'm getting ready to close. Even as Christians in here, you want a better life this morning? You start going back to Christ. You start drawing closer to Him. The Bible says if we draw nigh to Him, He'll draw close to us. He'll draw back to us, praise God. The fact of the matter is, if anybody left Christ, it's you. He didn't move. He's still right where you left Him. As Christians, we get dirty sometimes. As Christians, we forget why we're serving God sometimes. Not popular. People don't want to admit that. But I can tell you this morning that as Christians, sometimes we get comfortable and we get lax. And when you get comfortable and you get lax, you're in danger. Being lax and being comfortable is a sure way to find yourself separated again by sin. So this morning, let me ask each and every one of you here. I don't know how your heart is. I don't know anybody in here's heart. I don't know anybody's in here's destination for their soul. I don't know that. I know what you tell me. But you and Jesus know the truth. You and Jesus know if you're right with him. You and Jesus know if you're going to make it to heaven. If you close your eyes today for the last time. If you walk out this door and the front end of the building falls off and crushes you before you get to the parking lot, you and him are the only ones who would ever know whether or not you was right to make it to heaven. It is a personal walk this morning. And it has to be between you and him. And it has to be, you've got to be sure. If there's anything in your life to be sure of, honey, be sure that you're saved. Be sure that you're, that you're set where you need to set with Christ. Be sure that his blood has covered the sins and the voids and the cracks within your life. Be sure that you're ready to go home. <clears throat> be sure this morning. Now, there are just a few people in here this morning. Some people say, I, I go pray, but I, I just can't hardly go up in front of people. Don't you worry about the few people standing in here or sitting in here. Because there's only going to, one day there's only going to be you and Jesus. And then few people that are standing in here or sitting in here that you're not letting you go to the altar, that you're worried about, ain't going to be nowhere to be seen. They got this, their own little time limit in front of Christ. They're going to stand around and they're going to answer for what they done. So this morning, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, even if you had made it right years ago and you've not been living the life, this morning is the morning to get it right. This morning, we not promise that we'll ever get out of this church. We're not promised our next prayer. Please, be wise this morning. Don't leave without knowing Christ as your Savior. It's such a simple thing to do. But gosh, at the benefits this morning. Man, at the benefits this morning that come from knowing Christ as your Savior. Not only is He going to take care of you here, but when you leave this walks of life, you've got a home in heaven. Now there's only two choices this morning. It's hell or heaven. You're like, well, there ain't nobody would choose hell. By not choosing heaven, you're choosing hell. It's one of those deals. You're either one or the other. There's no in between. There's no walking in the middle on this one. As we stand, we're ready to be dismissed. Sister, go ahead and play. As your sister plays this morning, we get ready to dismiss, dismiss you. You're getting ready to go your way. You know, I remember back when I went to church, I was lost. I couldn't wait for this part. I always wanted them to hug so I could get out. Hurry up, get home. 
Get out from under that pressure that I was feeling on me. Get out from under that, that stress that I was feeling. Go back to my regular old life. Yeah. 